news. Coverage you can count on. Good afternoon, everyone. Governor Tom Wolf says he may soon ease restrictions on bars and restaurants. I'm Peggy Finnegan. And good afternoon. I'm Gordon Lesh. But that decision could be dependent on what happens in schools. Channel 11's Mike Holden explains how the two things are connected. Governor Tom Wolf says the return to school will potentially lay the groundwork for increasing occupancy at bars and restaurants just like this. But after talking with some of these bar and restaurant owners, they say it's not sitting well and they're kind of scratching their head wondering where this even came from. During a press briefing, Governor Wolf said the next couple of weeks will be crucial in determining if more people can dine in at restaurants and capacity can be increased beyond 25 percent. He says his current priority is getting students back to school. He talked about the metrics of COVID in schools and monitoring those numbers first. However, bar and restaurant owners say they're really feeling the pinch, and they say they're at the mercy of the governor. Kelly O'Connor with Kelly O says the two things have nothing to do with one another. She says they have been following the proper protocols and have still lost a considerable amount of business. She says Wolf's approach does nothing more than hurt the small business owners across the region. How do we weigh apples to oranges with that? Um, we have followed protocol. We are doing everything we can for cleanliness and social distancing and, you know, making sure that our customers are completely safe. And I think the next couple of weeks will tell the tale. Uh, and if we see real progress uh, in, in terms of the, the two things that I'm looking at, the case count per 100,000 and, and the uh, uh, positivity rate. And the Pennsylvania Restaurant and Lodging Association predicts that roughly 7,500 restaurants and bars will not reopen due to the pandemic. I'm now working to talk with additional business owners about how they're working to bounce back. And on top of that, how one lawmaker is fighting to give them additional resources Sources for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting in the Strip District, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. All right, thank you, Mike. And Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Danielle Dozier joins us now. And Danielle, it is warm and muggier out there today. temperature outside right now was in the mid 70s as you're looking over the city right now. Our temperatures across the rest of the area, it is in the mid 70s in Greensburg as well. 77 in Beaver and 77 degrees in Washington. We're headed up into the 80s today and boy oh boy has that moisture increased across our area. If you've been outside, you know it feels a lot more sticky to steamy. Our dew points right now are in the upper 60s and unfortunately they will stay that way through the rest of the day today. High temperatures will climb to about 83 in the Pittsburgh area, low 80s across the rest of the region with 5 to 10 mile per hour winds out of the south southeast. I am going to be tracking a chance for a spotty shower this afternoon. I think increasing chances tonight. I'll have your hour by hour timeline of the showers and storms moving in tonight coming up. And breaking at noon, the Allegheny County Health Department reports 29 new cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. Those results come from 954 tests. All but one of the tests were taken between August 24th and yesterday. Sadly, there were also four more deaths, two of which were associated with long-term care facilities. Developing this afternoon, police say a home intruder is dead and they think that it was his partner who shot him during the invasion. Allegheny County police say two men got into a house on Penn Avenue in Wilkinsburg last night. One of the suspects started shooting as he was running out the front door. The other intruder ran out the back. As Allegheny County police were investigating, they found a man in a ski mask dead just one street away. County police think his accomplice shot him because no one already inside the house fired any shots. Police in Pittsburgh had a busy morning at a SWAT situation for more than three hours in Lincoln Lemington. Officers say they went to a house where a man told them he was robbed. When they got there, another man ran from the house and into another one. That's when police called in SWAT. After talking to the man in the house, police figured out he was not involved in the robbery and let him go. At last check, police are still searching for the suspects of the armed robbery. President Donald Trump plans to visit Kenosha, Wisconsin today, and that is against the wishes of the Democratic leaders there. That city, as you know, has erupted in protests and violence. This after police shot a black man in the back and a white teenager killed two demonstrators. NBC's Tracy Potts has a look ahead at the president's trip. 
hours before traveling to Kenosha, Wisconsin today, President Trump on Fox overnight comparing police shootings to golf. But they choke, just like in a golf tournament, they miss a three foot. You're puck. not comparing it to golf because, of course, that's no, what the media I'm says. saying people yeah. choke. People, people, people panic. People choke. <laughs> The president's expected to survey riot damage and meet with police after appearing to defend 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse facing murder charges after killing two people in the chaos. He was trying to get away from them, I guess, it looks like, and he fell, and then they very violently attacked him. The violence we're seeing in Donald Trump's America. Presidential nominee Joe Biden blaming the president. And he's rooting for chaos. And violence and promising to prosecute looters rioting is not protesting looting is not protesting setting fires is not protesting none of this is protesting it's lawlessness plain and simple today's visit against the advice of local leaders i felt that the timing was wrong this is not about politics this is about my son. The president is not expected to meet the family of Jacob Blake, whose police shooting sparked the protests. He says he declined a phone call because the family wanted their lawyer on the line. Tracy Potts, NBC News. Both President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence will be in Pennsylvania this week. The president has a campaign, campaign stop Thursday in Latrobe. He's expected to speak at Arnold Palmer Regional Airport at 7. Officials say the event will be smaller than the large rallies for which the president is known. Vice President Pence will be in northeastern Pennsylvania today. He'll be visiting a construction company for a Workers for Trump event. Just yesterday, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden was in Pittsburgh. The former vice president says the Republican narrative that the country will be unsafe under his presidency is a distraction from the real issue, and that is the pandemic. During the visit, the Biden campaign wanted to make very clear that Joe Biden is not banning fracking. As you know, fracking is a very important issue here in Pennsylvania. Channel 11 anchor Lisa Sylvester spoke in person with the former vice president, and you can watch her interview, her full interview, on WPXI.com. Governor Tom Wolf says talks between his administration and Republican leaders on ways to improve the election are going okay, but the window for meaningful legislation is getting thin. Last week, Wolf called on lawmakers to change election rules to allow poll workers to begin processing ballots early and allow the state to count all mail-in ballots as long as they're postmarked by Election Day. That's a process that could take several extra days. Wolf says both parties are really interested in doing this, but they are running out of time. Another round of coronavirus relief aid could soon be coming to struggling American families and workers. That's what we expect U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin to tell lawmakers today. As our Jacqueline Feld reports, the secretary will face questions about ongoing negotiations and the Trump administration's response to the pandemic. This is the first time lawmakers will hear from Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin since negotiations over another rescue deal broke down in early August. Today's hearing will look at what lawmakers are calling an urgent need for additional relief due to the devastating toll the coronavirus has had on the economy. House Democrats approved a $3 trillion deal, while Senate Republicans came in with a more narrow $1 trillion plan. Mnuchin said yesterday that the Trump administration and Senate Republicans have actually been discussing a possible revamp of coronavirus relief measures. He says the new bill will hopefully be unveiled next week. Both sides agree that more stimulus programs and money are needed to help children, families, and workers. But the two sides remain far apart when it comes to the details. Reporting outside Washington, Jacqueline Fell, Channel 11 News. Happening today, the state health department will discuss the results of COVID-19 testing at long-term care facilities. In July, Dr. Rachel Levine directed the facilities to test all residents and staff at least once. This after cases of the virus spiked at nursing homes and other long-term care sites, including Brighton Rehab and Wellness Center in Beaver County, where 73 residents died. A new report shows the number of cases of COVID-19 continues to rise in children. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, more than 70,000 new pediatric cases were reported from August 13th to August 27th. That's an increase of 17% over two weeks. 
In late May, approximately 5% of all cases in the country were reported in children. But that has since increased to 9.5% as of August 27th. To date, more than 476,000 cases of COVID-19 have been reported in children. Dormont police need your help finding a bank robber. Take a look at these surveillance pictures. Police say this man robbed the Dollar Bank on West Liberty Avenue Saturday night. We're told he handed the teller a note saying he had a bomb and demanded cash. Police say the man was wearing a brown wig and ran off toward Texas Avenue. A boil water advisory for parts of Butler County has now been extended for another two days. That advisory was issued Saturday morning after a break in a 12-inch main on Delwood Road. The break affects Pennsylvania American water customers in portions of the cities of Butler, Butler Township, and Center Township. Water should be boiled before cooking or drinking. Bottled water and a water tanker is available at the Pan American Treatment Plant on Oneida Valley Road. New at noon, Sidney Crosby is on the men. The Penguins say their captain had successful wrist surgery yesterday in New York. Crosby's recovery time is expected to be three to four weeks, according to the team. If you are sticking around the area for the holiday weekend, make sure you are not driving under the influence. The West Hills DUI Task Force is going to be on the roads. Officers will be holding sobriety checkpoints and roving DUI patrols. The enforcement runs Friday through Monday. A small South Carolina town has two goals, honor a local son and move on from a painful past. How they want to do that coming up. We're pretty much just using our, our dining room table, but that can be hard. A new challenge for parents, finding space for their kids to take class from home. How one local company is stepping into help. WPXI Now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24-hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI Now. Always on when you want the latest on breaking news. Channel 11 Morning News brings you what's happening now. Happy first day of school to thousands of students. What's new and what's next? That meeting is set for 4 o'clock. We will keep a close eye on it. This could bring some much needed rain for us. Count on Channel 11 News every morning. Pittsburgh's Chief Meteorologist Stephen Cropper tracking the weather in your neighborhood. 
It is back to school for students in more than a dozen local school districts today. It includes both in-person and online learning. And we put together a list for you. The districts include Avonworth, Butler, Oil City, Pine Richland, and Ringgold. It's the first day for Bethel Park students as well. They will be attending classes remotely, and that's a decision some parents were against. They voiced their concerns at last week's school board meeting, but members voted for a virtual learning model instead, and they explained their decision at a meeting last night. We're going to do the best that we can that all our planning is put together, and we'll see how smoothly it goes. We want to get the children and our students back in school. That's our main objective. Bethel Park students will learn remotely until at least October 5th. Pittsburgh Public Schools delayed their first day after they ran out of laptops, and now at least one board member is unsure if they'll be ready by the new date of September 8th. I'm kind of suspicious about making another promise that we will be ready to start school again on September 8th. Saladin questioned if enough devices will arrive in time to start virtual learning next week. The board president says this is a supply chain issue and distributors couldn't fulfill promises for laptops. She said it's a problem many districts are facing. It just had to calm down and it also doesn't help the children either. So just be patient. We are not in control on how things are delivered. The district was told 7,000 laptops will be delivered this week in Peggy schools aren't the only ones finding themselves short of important supplies. No, Gordon, parents are having a hard time finding desks to make learning from home as normal as possible. Channel 11's Joe Arena learned about one local company offering some major help to parents. When we started to learn about this shortage, um, you know, we knew immediately that this is something we could absolutely do and, and help out with. Nick Friedhoff is aware of the struggle many families are going through this school year, and in particular, the serious need for more school desks across the country. So now, Hoff Enterprises out of Johnstown will be reaching out to school districts across Pennsylvania to offer desks like the one you see here behind Nick at a substantially below market cost. A lot that went into our design as well is to give a desk that is fully functioning, but doesn't take up too much space. Nick says there will be a few different types of desks available at different heights to accommodate different age groups. And the hope is that school districts will purchase these desks, use them in school, but also give them to families who need them. And parents we spoke to hearing for the first time about what Hoff Enterprises is doing says this could be a big help for those on a tight budget or like Megan Sanchez, who has three children and could use a space saver desk like this in her home, especially for her five-year-old. As a kindergartner, it's hard. There's like a lot going on in a really small space. Right now, we're pretty much just using our, our dining room table, but that can be hard um, just space-wise. Nick says the company is prepared to start shipping out these desks by the end of the week. And while their plan is to help out Pennsylvania school districts first, they're also prepared to ship these desks across the country. We're shipping them across the, the country. We're, it's no new game to us to, to work with logistical companies to, to ship truckloads anywhere in the country. In Pittsburgh, Joe Arena, Channel 11 News. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. We've got the cloud cover today. We do have the humidity as well, and we have had some beautiful sunrises lately. I want to first start with a picture coming in from Charles. He sent this one in of Monday sunrise and just beautiful colors in the sky there with those pinks and those yellows. And I want to share another one with you. I'll do that coming up in the next half hour. So stay with us out there today, though. Not the greatest sunrise. We did start with quite a bit of cloud cover. You're looking at our loop over the last couple of hours of our visible satellite. We've had a couple of stray showers out there during the overnight and early this morning. The theme of the clouds will continue over the next couple of hours. And in fact, we're going to keep it cloudy tonight and through much of the day on Wednesday. Take a look at our forecast. If you're out walking your dog here for the rest of today, we're expecting a mostly cloudy sky. It will be a warmer day on this first day of meteorological fall, by the way. We are looking at highs in the lower 80s at about 83 degrees, and we'll have a chance for a stray shower. But I think the better shot will be coming in by evening or even later on tonight. You can take a look here at our rain impacts. And 
and as we head into the next couple of hours, just a spotty shower chance. A good idea to have your umbrella with you by evening, though, as I do track a slightly better shot at seeing a little bit of wet weather across the area, although not a washout. And I'll show you the storm tracker maps in just a minute. Tonight, so low temperatures falling into the upper 60s with light winds out of the south. It's going to be another mild and a humid night with periodic showers and maybe even a rumble of thunder. Overnight lows across the rest of the area, upper 60s and low 70s with about 70 degrees in Beaver. And this is really a product of that high humidity. When our dew points go up into the upper 60s, the temperatures, they can't fall below the dew point temperatures. So when you get that higher humidity and those dew points coming up at night and you have clouds at night, they basically act as a blanket. So it keeps the overnight lows up. And we're looking at the mild, warm start really for a lot of us on Wednesday morning. Look at the afternoon forecast tomorrow. Temperatures will be climbing close to the 80 degree mark in the afternoon. We will have periods of showers and thunderstorms. In fact, I'm expecting multiple rounds. You're looking at our storm tracker maps right now. This afternoon, again, very spotty, if anything. We get into the late day and evening hours, increasing chances of seeing a little bit of wet weather across the area. And then especially late tonight into tomorrow morning. When you're heading out the door, you're going to want to check back with Channel 11 Morning News because we actually could be tracking some thunderstorms across the area, some of which could put down some pretty strong wind gusts as well as some heavy rainfall. And lightning, of course, is a threat in any thunderstorm. Wednesday's not a washout, but you're going to want your umbrella because we will have those showers and storms from time to time moving through our area. Five-day forecast with your weekend always in view. The 80s will continue at least until Thursday. Friday, we get a break in the pattern, and I'm going to show you what is leading to these low temperatures that are falling down into the 50s as we head into your Saturday morning coming up in the next half hour. A shootout between a man and police in Ohio was caught on camera. This is video taken by a driver passing the scene Monday near Cleveland. It's jittery, but you can see several different cruisers surround a car. After a few minutes, the man shooting the video zooms in, and that's when the suspect started shooting at police. Police say the officer was shot in the arm, leg, and hand, but is expected to be okay. His canine partner, Coda, was not hurt. The sheriff says the suspect was shot many times. He has numerous arrest warrants and may have been involved in a homicide. Wow, scary video. A campaign is gaining steam to replace a Confederate monument with a statue of actor Chadwick Boseman in his hometown. A petition on change.org has picked up more than 25,000 signatures to swap out the statues in Anderson, South Carolina. There was already a move to replace that Confederate statue, but the sudden death of the hometown hero is increasing the momentum. South Carolina law currently prohibits Confederate monuments to be removed under the Heritage Act and the petition asked for that law to be changed. The 43-year-old Black Panther star died Friday from colon cancer. Police make an arrest in a deadly hit and run. What officers say the driver said that led to his arrest? We shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Plus, how do doctors plan to fight the flu and the coronavirus before our hospitals get overwhelmed? This year, back to school is certainly different. So much has changed, and Channel 11 Morning News is here to prepare you for your day. Bringing you what's new, new details as your children go back to class or learn from home. Breaking updates all morning long. 11 investigator Angie Moreski reports on concerns. Our medical expert answers your questions. Plus weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Channel 11 Morning News covers what's new, now, and next. Every morning as we go back to school.
storm. The seven day forecast now on your screen all the time on Channel 11 News. New details about a deadly hit and run in Westmoreland County. A tip led police to the suspect. According to our partners at the Trib, police say William Williams was bragging about the accident. So the tipster agreed to meet with Williams and secretly recorded him talking about the crash. The crash happened back in March 31st in East Huntington. Robert Scheel was hit as he was walking. Williams was arrested Friday and charged with homicide. A California man is behind bars accused of murdering a Butler County man three years ago. Police in Long Beach have charged Scott Leo with killing Zach Kennedy, seen here. Kennedy went missing in 2017 while in California. His body was found buried at a home there in 2018. Police arrested Leo yesterday. Someone missing work due to illness can hurt an entire family. The push in Harrisburg to keep the money rolling in even when Pennsylvanians are off the job. Really, I think people want a change of scenery. But at what cost after the break? The extra things you need to keep in mind before planning your next vacation. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now. You have questions. Will my business bounce back? Should I advertise? Can I afford not to? Look to us for your answers. We're Studio 11 Pittsburgh. Award-winning video production that works. When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. The U.S. airline industry needs to cut labor costs by as much as 50% to survive. 
and even then some carriers may not make it. That grim prediction comes from former United Airlines executive chairman Oscar Munoz. He says cutting payroll costs by 50 percent won't necessarily mean cutting the number of jobs in half because some pay more than others. But he said some airlines could adopt job sharing programs in which workers share a job and a salary for a period of time, and that would reduce worker hours and pay. Pennsylvania gas prices have jumped in the wake of Hurricane Laura. The average price is 11 cents higher this week across western Pennsylvania. The average price is now 258. Last week it was 247. One month ago we were paying an average of 240 a gallon. Well, we have a big holiday weekend coming up, and uh, apparently a lot of people are planning to head out of town despite this pandemic. But depending on where you go, you could be ordered to quarantine when you get back. Channel 11's Jillian Hartman shows us what you need to know before you pack your bags. Well, despite COVID-19 concerns, a local travel agent tells me a lot of families plan to fly to Florida or other hot spots over Labor Day weekend. Really, I think people want a change of scenery, and there's nothing that delivers on that better than a, a nice getaway to the beach. There's tremendous pent-up demand and desire to travel right now, especially this holiday weekend. Travel agent Molly Fitzgerald tells me the airline industry has taken extensive measures to restore travelers' confidence, improving air quality, requiring masks and spacing out passengers. Not to mention, she says, tickets have never been cheaper. I think being on a plane is, is safer than being at the grocery store. But not everyone is comfortable flying at this time, so road trips have become a popular alternative. I'm seeing people drive eight, ten hours. Now, when you're doing that, you're often crossing through multiple state lines. Here's the latest travel advisory from the Pennsylvania Health Department recommending travelers quarantine for 14 days after visiting these states. Fitzgerald says families should know state entry requirements and plot their route because not every rest stop is open and hotels are booking at lower capacity. There's a lot of uncertainties along the way, and uh, having a plan versus kind of, oh, we'll just stop and get something on the way may not be as simple as it sounds. Many families also plan to stay home for Labor Day and are planning trips for 2021. So to get what you really want, if it's a big trip especially, um, now's the time to plan that out because space is going to be tight next year. Jillian Hartman, Channel 11 News. Also, keep in mind some states require a mandatory 14-day quarantine when you get there or a negative COVID-19 test beforehand. And the list of those states, we have it. It's on our WPXI News app. Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Danielle Dozier joins us once again now. Yeah, Danielle, warmer and muggier out there. You can feel it. You can definitely feel it. If you've been outside today, those dew points are up in the upper 60s, and that's just a very humid feel to the air. A live look over the city right now, it is mostly cloudy. Our temperatures are in the mid to upper 70s across the area, and we're on our way up into the 80s for this afternoon. If you're doing a little walking later on, do expect the warmth and that humid feel to the air. I am tracking as well a slight chance for a spotty shower. I think the better shot will come in either by evening or tonight as our data shows a couple of upper air disturbances rolling on through the area. Humidity-wise, I wish I had some good news for you. You can take a look here at the forecast. It's going to be feeling sticky to steamy over these next couple of days. I guess if I did have some good news, it's that this weekend, yeah, we're going to get some cooler and drier air in here. I'll show you why and a look at our fog tracker maps, which will bring in a little bit of patchy fog over the next couple of mornings. Coming up in my full forecast in a few minutes. There's a new push in Harrisburg to keep workers safe when they try to enforce mask rules. A new bill would make attacking an employee a felony. State Senator Maria Collette says that they've had at least three attacks in her district since May. A 17-year-old actually ended up in the hospital a week after reminding two people about the face mask requirement at a children's park. Collette says assaulting employees for simply enforcing the rules is unacceptable, and she hopes a stiffer penalty will help. 
Health experts are worried about what they're calling a twin-demic this fall, the flu and COVID-19 striking communities at the same time. In addition to continuing to wearing face masks and socially distancing, there's one more critical step they're urging Americans to take, and that is getting your flu shot. NBC Sarah Dalif has the story. In Virginia, a drive-up vaccination event for back-to-school immunizations went so smoothly. We have it a little bit down to a science now, I think. The clinic and others are hoping to use a similar setup for flu shots. Girl, one day <laughs> Health experts are strongly encouraging those six months and older to be immunized against influenza, sounding the alarm that flu season and COVID-19 could collide this fall with deadly results. We need to protect our hospitals and health workforce already having to cope with COVID-19 from being overwhelmed. The CDC ordering an additional 9 million adult doses of the flu vaccine and another 2 million pediatric doses. This year, the vaccine is protecting against four strains of the flu. Three was previously standard. And if you do still get sick despite the vaccine, health experts say your illness will be less severe and you're less likely to need hospitalization. We know that influenza vaccine is not perfect. It's a good vaccine, but we shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Infectious disease specialist Dr. William Schaffner recommends getting the vaccine between mid-September and early November. We protect us. We protect people around us. In the past three flu seasons, less than half of U.S. adults received one, and as many as 61,000 people died each year. The pandemic making this year's flu vaccine more vital than ever. Sarah Dolliff. NBC News. So is it safe to get the flu shot during a pandemic? Health experts say yes, it is. If your health care provider is following guidelines laid out by the CDC, including the use of face masks and enhanced cleaning. Governor Tom Wolf is asking state lawmakers to pass legislation to provide paid sick and family leave for employees who miss work for illness or to take care of a loved one. The governor says the law would help an estimated 400,000 Pennsylvanians. The paid leave can be used to recover from an illness, from medical appointments, to care for a family member, or to seek help from abuse or violence. It's estimated 80% of Pennsylvanians have no form of paid leave. A double hit, how the pandemic is affecting women, hard now and likely for years to come. News is happening in your neighborhood. Channel 11 News is there. We're in McCandless, Cranberry, and Butler. We cover news everywhere you live, not just downtown. We're in Aliquippa, Coriopolis, and Moon. Bringing you stories that impact your town. That's what makes Channel 11 News different. More local news from more neighborhoods. That's a fact. We're in Bethel Park, South Park, and Mount Lebanon. When you want news from where you live. Watch Channel 11 News at 5.
severe weather coverage where you live. On Channel 11 News. Today, the Pittsburgh Parking Authority will restart residential parking enforcement, and that means that they're going to be checking for permits on cars that are parked in zones requiring parking permits. However, parking violations for street cleaning will not be enforced until next April. PennDOT has extended expiration dates on driver's licenses and learner's permits. The expiration dates for licenses or permits that was scheduled to expire on March 16th are now being extended through September 30th. Drivers and vehicle online services are available 24 hours a day. PennDOT says it will continue to evaluate the situation, the situation and will make changes as needed. And Peggy, the pandemic has been hard on everyone. No question about that, Gordon. But according to a report by International Labor Organization, women have been disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. The report says many schools around the world are closed, leaving women to care for children. Also, half a billion of all employed women worldwide work in the four most affected sectors, including sales and service jobs. My rental bill is just going up and up. It doesn't matter what I'm trying to do, everywhere else is going up. So I'm fighting a losing battle. And even once the pandemic ends, many fear the effects will not. The International Monetary Fund says gender pay gaps are widening and threatening to wipe out 30 years of progress. Still to come on Channel 11 News at noon, why the future of JCPenney is a little dimmer today. Spotty shower chance this afternoon. Better shot at showers and storms on Wednesday. I've got your latest timeline and a look at the fog that could set up the next couple of mornings. You're streaming WPXI now. Your source for original local shows. Steelers, Penguins, Pirates, and more. The hottest Pittsburgh sports topics with even hotter opinions. Halftime adjustments. Wednesday nights at 7.30 on WPXI now. This year, back to school is certainly different. But Channel 11 Morning News is always here to prepare you for your day, bringing you what's new, what's happening now, and what's next. Be prepared for back to school. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. Be prepared for back to school. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. The Rivers Casino is extending its hours. The new hours will start just in time for Labor Day weekend. We're told the Rivers will be open 24 hours a day, except on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Those days will be, uh, the casino will be closed from 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. The expanded hours start on Sunday. 
Talks have stalled between J.C. Penney and three potential bidders, and that means stores that got a reprieve from closures that were announced in the initial bankruptcy filing could close after all. According to an attorney for J.C. Penney, several locations that were on the original closing list but were removed because of negotiations will now be closed promptly. The transaction should be completed within 30 days. The store at the Century 3 Mall began its liquid Sale, sale, excuse me, last month. The department store was the only store still open at the mall in West Mifflin. That store plans to close for good at the end of October. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Cloudy this morning, but not the case of the last couple of mornings. In fact, this is a beautiful picture coming in from Brian from Monday's sunrise. And I just love the colors in the sky. We have some pinks and some orange shaded colors in there. And if you have any pictures you ever want to share with me, you can always tweet me or Facebook me. We'll try to get those on the air for you. So mostly cloudy today. And if you've been outside, you know that it is definitely a lot more humid feeling. And that will continue to be the case for the rest of the afternoon. We're looking at high temperatures warmer as well in the lower 80s with winds 5 to 10 miles per hour out of the south southeast. As for tomorrow morning, the temperatures will be quite mild if not warm when you head out the door and it's because we do have all of that humidity in the air. So it's going to keep the overnight lows up as well as the cloud cover tonight which will act as a blanket on the temperatures. 71 degrees when you head out the door early. We may dip into the upper 60s in spots and our cloud cover is going to be sticking around as well. We'll have a chance for showers and thunder storms during the day on Wednesday and in fact I do expect that to be one of the biggest weather stories for the day as well as the chance for a little bit of fog in the morning. You're looking at our fog tracker maps right now and some of our latest computer data has been showing the chance for some patchy fog into your Wednesday morning and as well potentially into Thursday morning so your visibility could be limited not only for the fog but also for some showers and thunderstorms which I do expect to be across the area on Wednesday morning. I'll show you that in just a minute. Temperatures tomorrow about 82 degrees with scattered showers and thunderstorms. Winds out of the southwest expected to be right around 5 to 15 miles per hour. You can see the rest of the area highs tomorrow ranging from the upper 70s to low 80s in Butler, Butler County to low 80s across the rest of the area. Weather impacts for the day on Wednesday. Any storm that does develop and moves across the area will be capable of producing brief heavy downpours as well as gusty winds. Lightning is a threat in any thunderstorm. It's a good idea to stay weather aware. We're not expecting severe weather, but again, those elements could threaten or dampen your outdoor plans. Storm tracker at 3.30 in the afternoon today. Very few and far between on the shower chance there. I am expecting a slightly better chance later on this evening and then tonight where we could actually have an isolated thunderstorm. Wednesday morning, though, you're going to notice more showers and storms that are going to be moving across our area, so it's going to be a rather wet morning commute for you in spots. And as we head into the afternoon, a series of fronts moving through the area and a weather disturbance will keep it unsettled from time to time through the day Wednesday. If we can get through the middle to end of the week, Thursday-ish, we are looking at some better weather coming in by Friday. We have a big dip in the jet stream, which means some cooler air will be coming in from the north and check out the five day forecast you really can't beat it beyond thursday friday we're looking at 77 lows will be in the lower 50s into your saturday morning some outlying areas may dip into the 40s saturday 75 and make those outdoor plans for the weekend it's a labor day weekend after all we're a bit warmer on sunday but plenty of sunshine is expected all right thanks danielle the pandemic continues to wreak havoc with music clubs how musicians are stepping up to keep the venues open during these tough times. And here's local steals and deals, Lisa Robertson. Hey, Lisa Robertson here with local steals and deals. And here's a question. You ever notice that if you're working out, if you're doing yard work, whatever it happens to be, there are times when you just get overheated and you have to stop, even though you'd like to keep going, right? This is a company that you're going to love. It's called Mission. This is instant cooling technology. It was actually founded by world-class athletes back in 2009. So athletes like Serena Williams and Drew Brees and Dwayne Wade. And this is so cool because it's fabric that is proprietary and it's patented. So all you have to do is literally get it wet, wring it out, 
snap it. Now it's activated. Now it's actually going to change the evaporation process to help keep you cool for hours. So a friend of mine said, well, let's test it. She gave it to her husband who was going out golfing on a crazy hot day. He came home and said, oh my gosh, that really works. And here's the cool thing. You're going to use it for hours. And if you still want more cooling, you just get it wet, wring it out, snap it, reactivate it, good to go. These are all really lightweight fabrics. Look how fabulous that is. Machine washable, super easy, reactivate as many times as you want, reusable, obviously. This is the gator, by the way. So I showed you the towel, here's the gator. So you can activate this and put it around your neck to keep you cool. You can put it over your head. You can do a million things with it. You can put it over your face. You can even use this dry. If you're saying, hey, I just want to use it when I'm running as a face cover. I just want to use it when I'm running in somewhere as a face cover. Use it wet or dry. So these are the things that you're going to use all the time. And I love the fact that they're lightweight and they're easy. And I love the fact that they're even going to give you sun protection. They're UPF 50 as well. So you can throw them in the washing machine as many times as you want. You can reactivate them as many times as you want. And whatever you do, definitely go to localsteels.com and get them for 20% off right now. Great company, great concept, and patented. In Severe Weather Center 11, we cover weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the weather patterns across our neighborhoods and understand the unique influences on your area. It's why there can be heavy downpours in northern Allegheny County. While it's dry in Greensburg and rain is moving into Irwin. Our priority is to prepare you for the weather in your neighborhood. Count on Severe Weather Team 11 on Channel 11 News. Tracking storms where you live. Chief Meteorologist Stephen Cropper, tracking the weather in your neighborhood. America's m music venues are facing a crisis as the pandemic continues, and now artists are calling on lawmakers to take action. Nearly 300 independent music venues have banded together to form the National Independent Venue Association. The group, along with 600 artists from Lady Gaga to Billy Joel, are calling on Congress to take action. They've endorsed the Save Our Stages Act, a bipartisan bill which, uh, which would provide a six-month grant to independent venues. The city of Pittsburgh and Dollar Bank are having another drive-in movie night. This Saturday night, families can watch a beautiful day in the neighborhood in the parking lot of the Pittsburgh Zoo. The gates open at 8. The movie starts at 9. Admission is free, but you do have to reserve a ticket because parking spaces are limited. The free tickets will be available at 10 a.m. Thursday on the city's website.
That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Channel 11 Morning News brings you what's happening now. Just downgraded to a Category 2 hurricane. Jennifer Tomazic has been sifting through all the video. It really wreaked havoc. Watch new. New focus on a missing persons case. Family certainly has been a long time, several months without answers. And 